Okay, um, and so this week we're going to begin uh, connecting our database to our application and and then doing CRUD operations. You know, right now um, we did CRUD operations, but we stored our data in, a, in an array in the application. Therefore, every time you kind of rebooted the application, you, you lost the data in its state. Um, and so in the real world, you know, data stored in a database, therefore you close the application and and you don't lose, you know, you don't lose the data, obviously. And so we've been working in Atlas, and so this is, you know, we're going to be doing some a um, uh, little coding here, and so feel free to, to follow along. Um, and so, you know, in Atlas, you have your organization, and then inside of your organization, you have projects. And so we named one project Mflix, and if I kind of click on that, you've got your cluster. Um, really, I, I probably should have just named this mflix, you know, sample data, you know, because there's more than mflix in here. If I browse collections on, on my atlas, you know, there's a demo database I created and then all these sample databases that I created. And so um, that's kind of one project. But then um, here I also created an issue tracker v2. And this is kind of what I'm using for the labs. Um, and you can see here my current IP address is not yet added. We can do that later. Um, but if I browse my collections here, you know, we've got bugs and we've got users. And um, this is kind of where I think we did that last week when we were doing the database design. And um, we kind of spun up a new project to, to do a lab. Um, and so, you know, as we're connecting in, we kind of have to decide, well, what, what are we going to connect into? And uh, for me personally, you know, I think it, it makes sense to, to kind of do this incrementally. Um, and, and there's a lot of ways that you could write this code. And, and by this code, I mean the code that connects into the database. Um, and so, you know, certainly the way that, that we do it or that we're going to do it is not the only way. That doesn't mean that there's only one right answer. Um, it kind of just is where it, it has landed. Um, but I'm also going to show a couple of ways to do it. And um, what I thought when I was learning this for the first time, one thing that I found very beneficial was, um, was the documentation on Mongo's website um, that's literally uh, the the example of how to write um, you know node to connect to a Mongo database and so you can kind of see the URL up here you know I, I think I, I wound up um, searching this uh, through the Mongo documentation and I think I just did a Google search to kind of end up where I ended up so um, here's the URL uh, with this tutorial that we're going to follow along. And the reason that we're going to follow along is because when I was learning this for the first time, you know, I found this to be a very, you know, simple way to get started. And it's like, okay, it's, it's possible and it's not super complex on how, you know, how this could be done. Okay, now, again, we, we will build on this and we'll make modifications, but just kind of as a first step, I think it's a good first step, um, you know, it at least it gave me confidence that you know it's not doesn't have to be crazy complicated to to do this um, task. So we'll go through this together. All right, uh, this guide shows you how to create an application that uses Mongo uh, Node Driver. Okay, so inside of Node, you know we have packages, and we've been using some different packages, and one of the packages. Um, that we're going to use is literally called MongoDB node driver. And so we're going to bring in this Mongo driver uh, to connect to a Mongo cluster hosted on Mongo Atlas. And so that's exactly what what I want to do. Uh, that's that's the objective. And so this is the tutorial to do that objective. Um, you know, there's other ways of doing it. You can do that. Um, 
using a different driver or programming language. And so, um, you know, for example, a lot of things that you'll find on, on the internet doesn't use the Mongo node driver. Um, there's another thing out there called Mongoose for MongoDB. And this is another very popular way of connecting your application into a Mongo, um, into a, a Mongo uh, database. However, you know we're not going to use Mongo uh, Mongoose. Uh, we're just going to use this MongoDB node driver. Um, it's it's a, a a layer less of abstraction, and so when you're when you're doing when you're using this driver, you're very close to the code. And when you use Mongoose, it kind of abstracts some of the code away from you. And so I, I like this tutorial, although Mongoose isn't bad, it's certainly popular. I, my understanding is that Mongoose is a little bit more automated and, and a little bit less code centric. And so we're just gonna use a code centric approach. The node driver is a library of functions that you use to connect and communicate with MongoDB. Uh, we already know what Atlas is. Uh, Atlas is a web interface for your cloud databases. Um, follow the steps in this guide uh, to connect a sample node application to a Atlas. Compli uh, we already installed Node, so check this one off. Right, We already installed Node and we already installed NPM. And so step number one is uh, complete. Uh, step number two um, says go ahead and make a directory and init your uh, init your project. And so you can you can make a folder. That's all MKDIR is. It's just making a folder, and then CD puts you in that folder. Um, and so you know you can do that with command line commands. Of course, you can do that with Windows as well. Uh, if I just kind of go in here and I will make a new folder, I think if I hold down shift, I get different, uh, no, what, what command? Yeah. Okay, anyways, um, show more options, new folder. And so again, this is just a code along, feel free to code along. I'm gonna put this inside of my, my folder where I've got a couple other projects. Um, you choose wherever it's best on your computer to do this exercise. Let's do a new folder. And I'll say, um, hello world, um, uh, well actually what did they call it in the tutorial? We'll just follow the, the naming. They called it node quick start. So instead of hello world whatever, let's just call our folder node quick start just to, um, Okay, node quick start. And if you open this in VS Code, so let's show more options, open with code. And let's open up a terminal window. We know npm init slash y is gonna kind of autofill our package JSON. And this is node quick start index.js. Uh, is fine and we'll keep this here okay so we did the init y install the node driver and so here um, they're giving us a specific version of the node driver again you know npm install um, Let's do this, npmjs.com, and if I just search for MongoDB, you can see the official MongoDB driver for Node. And so it is version 5.6, so following this tutorial, it basically has you install uh, the current version. And so let's do that. npm, oops. Type in your prompt, npm install MongoDB. Now if you just say install MongoDB, um, it'll add the dependencies here. Node modules comes in and uh, 
you can see if I close this, I'm not going to save, reopen it. Now I've got my dependencies. Okay, it's probably best to have that file closed because again, it didn't add dependencies. So it is version 5.6. So just like the tutorial says, install 5.6, we're good to go. So this is the node driver. Um, so this is the new package that we had not worked with uh, previously. Next step is to create a Mongo deployment. Guess what? If you've been in this class, you already have that. In fact, you have a couple of deployments. You've got an issue tracker and you've got some sample data. I'm going to use my uh, sample data. And here I've got a list of users. Maybe we'll just connect into my users. Uh, again, demo uh, DB is my um, database name. And there's a users collection with, it looks like, um, a handful of, of users. Looks like six users. Um, so that'll be, that'll be what we connect into. And so back here. Uh, save your credentials. So we already have a database user and we already have a password. So on this one, um, you know, we've been using the Mongo shell to connect in. So you have a username and a password uh, for, for this. Now, for as a reminder, if you go back to database access, your username is here and whatever password you created is, is the correct password. So save your credentials. You already have done that. Create a connection string. Um, so this is going to be pretty similar. Um, connection strings are kind of what they sound like. I mean, they are a way to connect your application into your database. And so when you're connecting application to a database, you need a few pieces of information. You know, what is the location, what is the IP address or the URL? Like what is the location? Is it local host? Is it on the internet? You know, what is the location of the database? That's number one. What is the location? And, and then number two is what are the, the credentials? What are the username and password to connect into that database? Just because you have a URL doesn't mean that you can connect in and access the data. You need to provide credentials. Uh, so you need to uh, uh, authenticate with the system. So not only do you have to be authenticated, but you have to be authorized, mean grant permission. So connection strings basically have the information that you need to, to do that, to connect to your database. And so it tells you how to do that. You're going to click on connect to your application and then select node JS from the driver selection menu and the version that matches which we saw was 5.6. Select the password of Scram Authentication. So let's kind of go back here. So we can see Scram Authentication method. Let's go back uh, to Mflix. We're going to click Connect. And here it says Drivers. Now it is interesting that there's a bunch of ways to do this. We'll do this different ways. There is a MongoDB for Visual Studio Code that'll actually um, let you work directly with your data you see here from your MongoDB. That is something worth exploring that's a little bit newer. Let's click on drivers though. We're following this tutorial. Node version 5.5 or later. We already did our MongoDB. And here uh, you can see our connection string minus our password. And Here, um, they kind of segment this out, but you can view a few uh, a full code sample. You can actually see some of the uh, code that we'll be writing in our JavaScript, um, and so this will be helpful for us in a minute. But here's just um, your connection string, right? Here's your connection string into your application. Now you're going to have to fill in the password. And I always forget if that needs to be in quotes or you just put that in plain text, not in quotes. And so that's the only, I think you uh, maybe leave those angle brackets out too, I think is, is kind of the um, 
I think you literally just paste the password in here, getting rid of the angle brackets. So we'll have to get that to work. Um, so copy your connection string, which we can do that, right? Update the placeholders. Paste this connection string into a file on your preferred text editor and replace the username and password placeholders with your database's username. So you could see username is EA Gudmanstead and it doesn't have angle brackets around it, right? So if I even kind of go back to that um, place here, EA Gudmanstead doesn't have angle brackets around it. So we're going to paste my password not in angle brackets. That's just showing that as a placeholder. Save this file to a safe location for use in the next step. So let's just follow this tutorial. Um, again, I'm going to click on connect. I'm going to click on drivers. I'm going to not show the full code sample, even though that's where we're going. I'm going to copy this. Okay, I'm going to um, open up a new Word document. I'm going to paste this in. Okay, and again, your IP address is not on my authorized list. So even if you have my username and password, you know, at home on the internet, if you're watching this, it doesn't really matter because you can't get in without, you know, gaining access to the uh, having that IP address listed. So um, there's really no uh, or, or minimal risk that I run here by sharing my username and password because you're not on the IP address list. So very plain text, EA Gudmanstead, there's my password, and I'm just going to kind of keep that on my notepad because that's what the tutorial said to do. And this is really um, it, practically exactly what, what was on this last screen. Um, I will say that you'll notice they're using the uh, the older syntax using the require um, so we can update that um, but notice here it says replace the string with your connection string so we're we're basically bringing in a um, a variable here called Mongo client and um, so this new Mongo client, you know, we're creating an, an object here and then passing in the connection string, right? So, so here we're kind of bringing in um, a variable from our package. Here we're, we're storing our connection string in a, in a string. We're then creating an object to say, hey, go ahead and connect using this connection string. Um, then we're making an asynchronous function. Remember that most everything we're going to do in this node world is asynchronous and we talked about in the first week kind of the benefits of running asynchronous code. Um, and so we're going to write our own asynchronous function. This function is called run. Um, there's a try catch in here, right? So we're going to do a little error handling, but inside of this try, right, we're going to we're going to, uh, using our client variable that we created here, okay, we're going to connect to a sample mflix database. We're then going to specify, okay, inside of that database, which is this variable, what collection are we using called movies? We're going to construct a uh, query, right? So we're going to say, hey, here's, a, here's an object where a title is back to the future. We're going to run a find one command. Now, um, so this syntax is a little bit different that we're that we're seeing here than than what we did last week in the Mongo shell. But um, you know, we'll highlight those differences. Um, but it, it is still it's the same methods, right? We got find, we got find one, we got update one, you know, update many. All those same methods that we learned. Um, are, are here in the JavaScript world, just with a slightly different, um, just with a slightly different syntax. Now let's go ahead and kind of copy this code, okay? And and we'll update it. So let's go back to VS Code, 
and our home file is index.js. So let's over here, let's make an index.js, paste in our code. Now this again is the older syntax, so I would instead um, use an import which is going to look a little bit different. Uh, let me pull that out, right? So I want to import just a second here. Okay, so I'm going to comment that line out. Let's see. Import MongoDB. Uh, 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 lost. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Mongo client. Yeah, Mongo client. Just like before, import Mongo client from MongoDB. I mean, syntaxes. I could have guessed at that, but I just wanted to look it up. Uh, import Mongo client from MongoDB. So this is kind of the newer syntax now. Again, to use this, we want to go back into our package JSON and set type colon to modules, right? So the ES6 modules to support uh, using imports. And so now Mongo client, that's, that's the only kind of the, the newer syntax. Now, the next thing we need to do is paste in our connection string URI. Well, that's what we had copied in to Notepad from before. So I'm going to copy that and paste here. Um, it is not typical to store your connection string to connect to your database inside your JavaScript uh, so bluntly, right? Because that's a security risk. Again, this, this is all sample data for a dummy database for me, so it makes no difference. But in the real world, you take your connection string, and we're gonna learn a couple different places you could store it, and you know, pros and cons of that. Uh, but, um, uh, the .env file would be one good place to store a connection string, right? Those were environment variables. Um, we're also going to learn about um, a package um, called uh, um, uh, I want to say it's connect. Um, we'll learn another package. Anyways, we're going to learn a couple places you can uh, store a connection string, but the point is right now it's just getting it up and running. So there is that. There's your Mongo client. So this function, you, you can basically see it's, it's going to query back to the future. It's going to do a find one looking for back to the future and then throw it out on a console log and then close the connection. You can see after the, the there is no catch. It's just go ahead and run it and then Right, so this function runs on line 21, right? So we say run, um, and then uh, there's a there's a catch in case it uh, in case there's any sort of error messages, it can catch and spit out some sort of error message. So let's go ahead and npm. Uh, our node, we'll say node index.js. And uh, the data is returned, and that means we're up and running. I mean, this is, I mean, this was a quick tutorial, right? This was real simple to get up and running. Um, but I wanted to show how easy it can be, you know, to tie in your application into your database. Now, very quickly, we evolve on this. We we start storing our connection strings in other places, and um, we, we're going to write our our logic a little bit uh, more efficiently in the sense of um, you know making our code reusable and um, you know 
So it, we're going to we're going to kind of evolve on this um, quickly. But I just wanted to kind of go through this quick and easy tutorial because it was something that I did um, when I was first learning, and I thought, oh, this is this is awesome! How how easy it is to get up and running. 